up, everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 211, and we're recording on November 14, 2022. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. As a quick reminder, check out Soji Talk on your favorite podcast platform. Sub to us on YouTube and join the Soji Talk Discord and be a part of the nation. All right. Big shout out to our new Fuego patron, Wiley. Ooh, shout out to ooh, for signing up thank for you. Thank you. What's up? We're just going to go straight into big releases. We got two of them, two female solo artists. On Friday, 11-11, we had Alexa with Back in Vogue. And then today on the 14th, we had All My Girls, Yua with Selfish. So let's talk about Alexa first. She is from ZV Company. I think ZV Company is, is, is company at the end? ZV, ZV Label? La- ah, ZV Label. That's it. Go. That's yeah. it right there. Debut 2016. Mm-hmm. Last three songs were Wonderland, Tattoo, and Extra with zero music show wins so far. The Wonderland song was the one that she won the Great American Song Contest with, I believe. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's mm-hmm. a pretty good song. Um, all right. Back in Vogue. I kind of like the style of Alexa more than the very Ooh. aggressive, like, electronic Alexa from that we had in the, be- the beginning stages of her solo career. Mm. Really? I feel like this is more defined, and I like this more. I feel like... I, I, I kind of feel like the early part of some of Alexa's song all kind of sounded the same, had like kind of the same, same aggressive energy going on. Yeah. I remember she did that one slower song, which we did like because she showed off the vocal chops, right? And then mm-hmm. she's releasing this type of song, which is more like controlled, I would say. Yeah. I like it. I think it's okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It's it's less of cyber Alexa and more like that's it. Yep, that's what I was looking human for. Alexa or or you know organic <laughs> Alexa, I guess. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can hear some influences of like hip hop music and jazz music in the background as well. Um, yes, right, yes. right. Mm-hmm. The instrumental is clearly pulling a lot of influences from like um, hip hop music with female soloists from like the mid to late two thousands almost. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of a specific reference artist off the top of my head. Anita, maybe you have any, but um, that's kind of the mm-hmm. vibe I was getting, right? Like a lot of like yeah. mid two thousands hip hop music, R and B vocalists on a hard hitting hip hop beat, that yeah. kind of situation. Um, but with like a twenty twenty two update, and what I kind of identify as a R B W kind of melody, um, which kind of reminds me of like hip hop. Of like the early 2000s as well. Um, so a lot of throwbacks. But not with an old finish. But more so with like a 2022 finish. I don't know. It doesn't sound particularly old is what I'm saying. You know? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah. I agree. I feel like in the the sound-wise, right? I definitely felt like the more hip-hop vibe. Like the background. Yeah. Um. But I found it so interesting that it was combined with these like futuristic visuals, um, and then also like a cabaret type of theme going mm. on, um, and then the voguing. I feel like all three were a very interesting combination. Like I was not expecting the sound, the visuals, and the choreo to be <laughs> this combo, but mm-hmm. it it was interesting. I think it added something that could have been very like tropey um, to make it a little bit different. I feel like the song does come off a little campy though. Like, yeah, I, right? I, mean, I mean, feel like it, it was, it has elements, yeah, right? It has elements. But it, they, they didn't quite go all the way. I think that's what mm-hmm. they're going for though. Like, they wanted a little bit of campy. That's the thing I always got with Alexa is that there's also, or there's always that like Alexa quirk next. Quirky. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta really mm. buy into the, the character, honestly. Right. 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 Yeah. And I feel like I that's. Know. I feel like that's you always like been that like, though? I don't know if I like it per se, but I what I appreciate is that it's very consistent with her identity as a social media person mm-hmm. on her podcasts or uh, on YouTube or, you know, mm-hmm. I haven't seen the great American TV show. What is it called again? Song Contest. Song, Song contest. contest. I imagine that's the identity she had there. That's That's all I'm guessing, right? Like. Cause all, uh, yeah, right. Everything I've, everything else I've seen has been pretty consistent for the most part, right? Yeah, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just feel like I don't know. Would it? Would it? 
why I know it's just called American Song Contest. Why do I? Well, I it was a great show, so it's great American Song Contest now. <laughs> <Number one. laughs> okay, <laughs> we just adding it. Number okay. two, I feel like this type of song though, it almost feels to me like a tiny bit mopey at times, you know. Oh. But this is the this is the beat of the song, right? Right. That's it's, the <laughs> genre itself. Yeah. And for someone who wants to get, like, I'm not saying we need to go cyberpunk Alexa, right? But at the same time, when you got this type of almost a little bit mopey song, it's just hard for me to really say like banger, you know? Hmm. <laughs> well. Okay. Well. They can't all be bangers. Yeah, I mean, they, she. she <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. She did EDM. You didn't like it when she did EDM. So. Yeah, but some slow songs are bangers, like Taeyeon's I N V U. That's not a fast song by any okay, means, okay. but that's an absolute that's... banger. Oh, okay, I like I N V U. I think the song is great. I don't know if a banger is the descriptor I would use for I N V U. I think it's a banger. I think it's, it's a, a lovely song, great song. Banger to me is something that bangs, you know? I can't shake my booty to I N V U. I could to back in Vogue, you know? Like... Hey man, okay, it's the yeah. it's the motion of the ocean, my guy. Just saying. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I but I understand where you're coming from. I think a yeah. big part of it is the way the genre is uh, like set up. Um, particularly the the rhythm itself isn't very fast. It's not like very like tight or anything. It's mm-hmm. more so it's more so groovy, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's why, to me, it didn't feel like the chorus was trying to make a big banging impact, but it felt like a natural progression in and out of the parts behind it and, and, and from after it. And I felt like that was done, for the most part, pretty well, you know? Um, mm-hmm. It flows into it, she does her great vocal moment, and then she flows out back into where she, you know, backs off a little bit. And, and that's typically, that's typically good pacing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess what I'm just trying to say. I haven't been completely gripped by the music yet from Alexa. I don't know. It's, mm-hmm. it's like fairly consistent every time for me. It's just... There was a moment in like, I want to say that it was the bridge with the like, the breakdown with the staffs, umbrellas, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, you know, the random uh, umbrellas that came out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it was, a little, it was a little random, but I felt like that it was a moment where I was like, okay, yeah, this feels a little bit more up. Like the pace was a little higher. Like it seemed like there was a shift, right, in the energy, and then, but then we went back. So I feel like, oh, I kind of wish we could have had that earlier on or throughout the song. Um, like even yeah, the they vocals. literally say, "Bring it back, mm. back, I'm back, back, back." <laughs> they brought yeah, back the original yeah. energy. Back, yeah, back, yeah, back, yeah. back. And I don't know. I feel like the the sound sh- changed a little bit in that moment where it was more synthy, like more electronic i guess than other parts and i feel like oh this kind of this kind of makes more sense to me in like yes. the aspect of what the song is doing and like the choreo and so the you oh you also want less of organic alexa and artificial cyber alexa is what no, no, you no. want we want we want <laughs> the, the, we want the bridge energy mixed in with some cyberpunk right anita yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay i don't know how you do that Right? <laughs> we, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you an answer to the problem, right? Right. But that's what I want. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to convey that, though. But Anita and I, like, we like the vocal riff. At certain certain mm-hmm. points, the cyberpunk stuff is cool, right? Right, Anita? Yeah, kind of really cool, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of her staple as, as Alexa. So I, I think mm-hmm. if we smash those two together more, I think we, we, we'd be more successful. I think, mm. I don't know, I, I always felt like that whole cyberpunk direction for Alexa has been, she did what she can with it, I think she did great with it, Um, but I think it's, I feel like she's been trying to move away from it for a while, I remember covering Extra. Ran its course. Um, mm. I don't know if it ran its course per se, but I remember covering Extra, I think was the track we covered, which felt a lot less of that and more towards yep. Y2K team yeah, yeah. kind mm-hmm. of aesthetic that was the one with bm right i think in the song oh yes was yep. it? it was that one that was actually yes that was the one um and i think beyond that she hasn't really identified a specific direction that she needs to go in but rather mm-hmm. she's trying to bring the 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 her energy to these songs um, whether that mm. is something that works for you or not, I, I, I think that's where people are probably split on the track. Um, 
but you know she's wildly popular in the west there's probably a reason why is you know what i'm thinking okay i think that wraps our conversation about alexis back in vogue uh second song came out today on monday november 14th it is oh my girls you are with selfish she's from wm debuted 2015 with oh my girl Last three songs were Melody and Lalo, which I believe are B-sides on this release, and then Bon Voyage, which was the only other solo track. One win as a soloist, 20 with Oh My Girl. Bon Voyage was like a... It came out of nowhere, right? If you did the nature yeah, theme all of a sudden, and there was yeah. like African riffs and drums in it, and it was very refreshing. It was like, this feels like a very Animal different. Kingdom ad from Disney. I remember, you know, like something like that, right? <laughs> Animal um, Kingdom. Yeah, they could play that at Animal Kingdom and it'd fit right in the place. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, I see that, yeah. So, so that one happened. Like, Oh My Girl does its thing. Bon Voyage was how long ago? Let me look this up real quick. Bon Voyage 2020. was in 2020. So it was two years ago. We didn't hit the U.S. solo button again until now, right? And then we get the mm-hmm. selfish song. Very different from Bon Voyage. And I saw a lot yeah. of people talking mm-hmm. in narratives saying how uh, WM always fumbles the bag with Oh My Girl and their soloist potential and their popularity that they garner once in a while. I kind of agree with these takes <laughs> that I've been hearing. <laughs> oh. so I just don't have good confidence in WM as a company, personally. It's a bit um, of an oof. Yeah, because like I feel like Bon Voyage was just like, that was experimental in a good way, and it worked well, and everyone liked it, and it's one of the, one of the more memorable solo, uh, solo songs we had in the last couple years, right? And then this mm-hmm. Bon Voyage, it feels like they found this one riff that I want you back. The part that they the, the, the producer liked. Maybe a little bit too much, right? And he just threw it in. <laughs> Similar to Hush Rush, how I didn't like the one part they kept repeating. I feel like this song has some of the same problems. And you know what's the tying thing? They're both under WM. Do you want to know another tying uh. thing? <laughs> what is? They're both, they're both a joint production between them joints and Ryan Jun. Oh. oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Huh. I, I think they're on a run mm. of doing repetitive, earwormy riffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, well, okay. Before we, I guess, while we're on the topic, before we dive into selfish, if you liked Supe Ai, what is that in English again? Bon Voyage. If you like Bon Voyage, uh, Melody, which is the fourth track on the EP, is a little bit closer to that kind of color. Um, so maybe that will tickle your Bon Voyage bones. I don't know. Selfish is definitely <laughs> just a different monster. Um, I wrote in the first bullet in my notes, I wrote Lil Wayne meets Megan Trainer. Um, which <laughs> oh, wow, okay, wow, which, wait, wow, okay. that kind of fits, right? Like, because uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, if it's okay, think about Lil Wayne, think about his best tracks. Uh-huh. A milli, six foot, seven foot. You know? <laughs> Dude, I'm on this website. The first comment was, this is trap without a trap beat in a the, bad way. The, <laughs> <it's> in- <laughs> okay, okay. I would probably say less trap and more southern hip-hop with all the snares. But, but still, but still. That oh. person's hitting what you think, Warren? Kind of, right? Kind okay, of. Okay, okay. I mean, I don't know. The moment I heard the... the, tra- the, the it's not really a trap bass, but rather just... I don't know. sounds like a snare. Hip-hop snare. The moment I heard that with the I want you back, I want you, that thing repeating over and over again, it reminded me of like Lil Wayne style beats where like the beats are like a milli, a milli, a milli. There, there you go. That kind of thing. <laughs> they have those like rep- uh, repeating vocal riffs um, playing as a part of the uh, as beat. And I mean, it's produced by them joints. I feel like he consciously or unconsciously might have pulled influence from there. I don't know. Just a guess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason I say it meets Megan Trainer is because it's we're I feel like we're retaining that kind of like funk with the track. Um, especially with the way okay. Yua sings. It feels a lot more oh, yeah. soulful, rather you know? Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. on purpose for right, sure. Right, right. And mm-hmm. it, it's partially I think it's a little more appropriate for the genre. Um partially I don't I'm not sure if I prefer it over the other. I think it's just a different kind of thing that you was good at. Um and like we mentioned earlier, I'm seeing a lot of parallels with Hush Rush. But whereas I felt I felt like Hush Rush did a minimal amount of things, all of which were the right, correct, appropriate choice. You know what? And it was very minimal. <laughs> I'm Hush Rush's critic. I will 100% agree with what you're saying right now. Yeah? 
because selfish felt like it they had the same amount of work done to it but they made the wrong choices and you end up with a song that feels a little too repetitive and a little too empty mm -hmm. that's that's the things i got right um i agree yes i agree with that yeah I, and and the the other part of it is that the the chorus itself the, sorry not the chorus what is it called I want you babe I want you that thing the hook yeah the hook, mm. the hook. I I just don't think it's that earwormy I'll be honest it's kind of like oh my god how many times are you gonna say this you know yeah All right the thing is like I feel like it's meant to be and I think it could have been but there was a point where like the way that it was so the the way the song starts like that's the first thing you hear and then it repeats again in the chorus and then it just keeps coming back and forth towards the end so i just feel like it didn't it was not presented in a way where it felt like oh yeah this is it, this is an interesting part it just felt like oh yeah i've heard this already throughout right. the whole song and and i understand like so the chorus is basically two parts it's her repeating i want you babe i want you that thing and then mm -hmm. um she has a little bit of a vocal part and then she does i want you babe i want you um the the lyrics here reads 도착했다 아님 정말 모르겠음 모른다고 해 확실히 해 I don't remember the melody off the top of my head I can't check it because I'm recording the thing right now um it's it's like yeah she just says it very staccato right and I understand that's uh that's the attempt to mix up the chorus and give it a second part which is meant to you know build off of the existing part which is the core of the song. But it doesn't work because I feel like the core of it, which is I want you, babe, I want you, that's just not very appealing to me at the very least. Maybe it was to them joints and Ryan Jun. I that's probably why they made the song, right? Um What I did like, I don't think it's an awful song, right? Even though we're all pooping on it. No, I, I mean it's not. Right. Mm. I feel like one thing the song does really well is like have two kinds of energy and, and I think they're both coexisting with the song. Um the mo there's a part in the song after the second verse where she does like zom 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 I did not get that. Why was that there? I don't know. I I don't know. But but what I will say confused. I was like, we're ending it? We're done? It felt like a good contrast with the rest of the song. Um which if you actually go back to the part I was talking about before that the chorus itself, you hear two parts the part where she's very high energy and high pitched and the part where she's like just she's in the vocal tone of zom 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 and kind of sounds yeah. like kid mm -hmm. millie around here um and mm -hmm. those two those two vocal parts are layered together and i feel like that was pretty interesting but it wasn't i didn't feel like it was a fully developed idea you know just oh i agree yeah sorry i kept cutting you off anita what, what are you trying to say no 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 i i, I agree i feel like that I wrote down like that part seemed very odd to me because it mm. felt like it felt like it was a different section, but it didn't feel like it went anywhere specifically. Like right. it didn't add or take away, I guess. It was just interesting. And I, I got confused. I thought like, oh, is this is this the outro? Are we ending it? And we were like at two two thirty, like the two minutes. And I feel like, oh, that's kind of early and there's still a lot going on. Right, right, right. And then we went back. And then we went back to the previous thing. I don't know. I, I feel like there was, I can see where things were supposed to go. Like, I could see, like, oh, yeah, I kind of see where the vision was for the hook and, like, the vibe with the, with the drums or the snares. But I feel like it was very, like, I think you already mentioned, like, empty. Like, very, like, light. Like, I wish it would have been more depth in the chorus. Like, maybe added instrumentals or something. Because I felt like everything was very much on the surface. Right. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. And then, and it feels like it goes like that throughout the whole thing. And, and I think a part of it was intended because it's, I, it's very clearly meant to be an easy pop thing, easy listening mm -hmm. pop thing, um, as is with Hush Rush and this one as well. Um, but here's the thing. You got you yeah. a fantastic performer. Mm -hmm. Right, everyone likes her. Oh well, yes. The dance sections yes. are very good. When she was, I like, appreciated the one thing that. Is, so the dance much. parts on that beat are very good because she dances so well on yep, the beat. Right, I, agree. I appreciate that tremendously. Mm -hmm. But it just feels like the rest of it is kind of like, oh my god, we're just gonna repeat the same crap over and over again, right? <laughs> and then 
And then, you know, they, I, at three minutes and six seconds, they whip out the SpongeBob font. It's literally the SpongeBob <laughs> yes, font. If yes. you look it up, they, you, you can't be whipping out the SpongeBob font. You know, I'm getting once that happened, I got very distracted. And I was like, was that the SpongeBob font? Like, I got way too distracted. And the song was over by the time I recomposed myself. I mean, it was it was they were playing off the meme, right? The 200 yeah, years later. later. Yeah, yeah, there's a SpongeBob reference yeah. in this song, y'all. Um, <laughs> just want to throw that out. There's also like pink cactuses and like in pink clouds. There's a lot of interesting visuals going on. I thought the dancing was good. We could even Very have nice. some more because Yoa, you, Yoa was killing it on those parts. But mm-hmm. I just feel like it's hard to really like everything when the song itself just kind of mid. Here's the thing. I'm not going to lie. I felt like the music video was a little bit much for the song itself, right? Because okay. the, really? the song is a little laid back. Interpret that how you will. Yeah. Um, the music video is a lot of like, like, the like whenever I heard like a very blank part of the song, the music video was like panning all over the place, fancy sets, and she's like dancing very hardcore. Mm. And the song is like zom 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 zom. You know, like that doesn't match. Mm. You know, different levels of energy. Mm. Um, and I, I understand we're trying to go for like a quiche kind of like campy vibe here, but at the same mm-hmm. time, yeah didn't feel same same energy but sorry actually similar kinds of energy same different amounts of energy from the song in the music video is, is is what i was getting at um and that's where i was um kind of overwhelmed with the music video i was like dude did we really need all the fancy panning cameras and the huge movements and all that i don't know that's that's my thought yeah I don't know. I just, I just feel like we, could, we I just feel like WM could have gave you a song a little bit better. I don't know. I don't think mm. it's a terrible song by any stretch of the imagination. I just think it's just kind it's of right. there, and it's just kind of like they wanted it to be super catchy, and everyone's doing that part, all like singing that "I want you back, I want you" all the time. But at a certain point, I don't think they really hit the mark on that decision, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think if I can add one more thing. One thing I noticed with the song is that it's kind of long. Three minutes, 34. It felt long. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of songs I like are over five minutes long. But mm-hmm. a lot of those five minutes is, you know, very jam-packed. It's structure. Right. Yeah, it, it, can, it can feel shorter if you structure it in a way that it seems like you're going like you're moving forward constantly right i feel like right. this was a loop sometimes right right and it would have benefited i think i think it would have largely benefited if it was a little shorter um mm. like generation we talked about it last week a little repetitive but not annoying because it's only two minutes and 45 seconds you know um it's quite short, yeah. right k-pop tends to be Typically, K-pop tends to be less than three minutes nowadays. Mm. Um, so Recently, I'm yeah. right. So for a song that's trying to be repetitive, for a song that's easy listening, um, and for a song that's I don't know, pretty K-pop as it gets, I I feel like they could have shortened it down a little bit. You know, like for instance, like uh, the mm-hmm. um, the I want you, babe, I want you. That thing, the when it happens as the first chorus not in the beginning of the song when it happens as the first chorus and the second chorus and the third chorus it's eight bars each could have been four bars i don't know the zoom 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 thing it's eight bars could have been four i don't know just an, just an <laughs> option you know just throwing that out there that's what a lot of people do these days kind of works for them not sure why they did that here um i'm sure there's a mm-hmm. reason i i hope there was a reason because if there wasn't that says something about them joints and Ryan Jun and WM, but okay. What else? Uh, other releases this week include Kim Jong Hyun, also known as JR from New West, had his solo debut with Meridium, I believe. Uh, Craxy released Poison Rose, Treasure released the B side. Volca- Is it Volcano? Did I just spell this wrong? No, Vol- well, no? no, okay. <laughs> I chilling <laughs> released Draw, Extinary Heroes released Haircut. A Pink's Jungun Ji released Journey for Myself, which is a remake of a Buzz song. That's a great um, song. That's a great Trends song. released Vagabond. Ryu Su Jung, who is from Lovelies, right? She released Dearest. The Seraphim had a B side MV with Impurities. Very, very mm-hmm. released Tap Tap. And Exos Chen released Last Scene. Vice King. 
last week, episode 210, Acid Angel from Asia, Triple S, uh, Generation got two crowns because it got all first place votes, so it was eligible for Hall of Spice. Alice Dance On got second place, and BTS's Jin got third place. New candidates are Alexis Back in Vogue and Oh My Girls, You Was Selfish. Okay. Should Acid Angel from Asia Generation enter the Hall of Spice? Is essentially what we are deciding this week. We don't have too many releases, so we'll have to see what happens. I have it in first place this week. I think you gotta. <laughs> out, of, out of those songs, I feel mm-hmm. like you gotta put it in first place. Second place, I have Alice. I like the song. I like Dance On. I listen to it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Third place, I have Alexa with Back in Vogue. That is my chart for this week. Dang. We're twinning today. Let's go um, twinning. Because that's the exact same chart. Oh, you guys are um, boring. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I mean, given the the releases for this past week, I feel like that makes sense to me. I feel like third place for Alexa... I, I definitely feel like I I will like some shift in the sound to reflect more of like the early stuff that she was doing with the cyberpunk thing, the futuristic thing, because I think that's cool. But I do agree like they could be a mix so that it's not only that. And it's probably like better for longevity. But yeah, Alice in second and what what are we calling them? Triple A? Triple S? Triple S. In first place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They, not gonna lie, in hindsight, naming them Acid Angels of Asia when their group name is Triple S, not, I'm not, not sure if that's a great marketing move. It's confusing a it, little. It's a little confusing because you have it's Triple so A confusing. and Triple S. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so confused always. It's okay, Mr. Jaden Jong. I believe in you. Is it? Swiping every moment. Can never get enough never ending circles. Can't get you off my mind is on first place today as well. <laughs> wow. It's a good song. I like it. Like it like like. Hey, I'm pretty excited for the other stuff this group is gonna release. I'm gonna be honest. Same. I'm pretty very curious. I thought mm-hmm. we're gonna I thought we're done with having cool, exciting rookies from girl groups. Apparently not. I know. Not right? yet. <laughs> we're not done yet, apparently. We're gonna have to do another tier list. I don't know. It's great. Um, okay, second place is where I start not twinning with you guys, apparently. I don't know. Um, oh. Because I have The Astronaut by BTS's Jin over here. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Ooh. I'm still having fun with the song. I'm still having fun with the song. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprisingly enough, indie rock has been, and modern rock has been some the music that I listened to a lot this year. I was actually looking back at my stats for Spotify. Um, because your Spotify rap is going to happen in two weeks. And I was like, I don't see a oh, lot yeah. of hip-hop albums on here. Because <laughs> that's what I normally listen to. But apparently not anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Black Skirts. And this, to be frank, I don't know how, kind of reminds me of that. Um, but in a great way. And, and not in a, oh, he jacked his style kind of way. Um even though I don't think his vocal tone was the most appropriate for the production, I've mm. kind of grown to like it for some reason. Um, I liked him. Yeah, it's nice. Um, so, he is on second for me. Nice. Back in Vogue was a pretty decent release. In, in, in fact, one might argue, one of my favorite things from Alexa in a long time, given that my track, track yeah. record with Alexa has been not good to very not good. Um, so that is on third for me, back in vogue. Um, that is, yeah, it's three songs, and I can pick three songs. <laughs> so Warren was talking about what he's been listening to lately, real quick. I want to give a shout out to Yunhua's Event Horizon. Bro, if you're not, if you're not listening to Yunhua's <laughs> Event Horizon, you don't know what's going on in the K-pop music, in the Korean music scene at the moment. This song Pop is it. the one that pretty much dethroned. Nude, anti fragile, after like all of them, this is the one that's dominating the chart at the moment. Um, just, just for clarification, um, her name is Yun Ha, not Yun Hua. There's oh, no... yeah, my bad. Yun Ha, you, yeah. I can't, God damn it. it's okay, it's a hard name. Um, you gotta listen to Yun Ha's Event Horizon. It is, it, it's a candidate for song of the year, I would say. Here's the thing, guys, real quick. Um, I know Yun Ha's not a very relevant name because her peak 
was before K-pop was popular in the West. Mm-hmm. Mm. She's on. She's one of the OGs, folks. She's one OG. Yep. Um, and it's incredibly surprising that she's thirty, only thirty four years old, because she debuted sixteen years ago. Jesus. <laughs> wow. So I mean, I think she's like what eighteen when she debuted. That's an idol to me. I don't know about you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but she's an incredible power vocalist. Um, and I think that shows in Event Horizon as well. Um. Also, if you like J-pop, if you like J-rock, this will be up your alley easily. You can't be sleeping on it. You cannot be sleeping mm-hmm. on that song. Y'all All are right. napping. Let's go back. Gochu Gang, right? With a 36 points, they gave Acid Angel from Asia Generation first place. Second place with 23 points, Alexa back in vogue. And in third place, they have Alice Dance On. That is their chart for oh. this week. Mm. I totaled it up. Uh, third place... Alexa with back in vogue six points. Second place is Alice dance on with seven. And in first place, picking up all 20 points again is Acid Angel from Asia, the subunit of Triple S with Generation entering the Hall of Spice officially. Wow. That's crazy. They're on the chart even before they (laughs) debuted. All right, I'm going to read off the list. Hall of Spice now is. BTS Dynamite Twice I Can't Stop Me Dreamcatcher Ada I U Lilac Stacy ASAP BTS Butter Tay on Weekend Some of You Can't Sit With Us Stacy Stereotype Twice the Feel Seventeen Rock With You Chunga Killing Me From Us Nine DM Stacy Run To You Red Velvet Feel My Rhythm Dreamcatcher Mizan Got Seven Na 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 Chunga Sparkling New Jeans Attention I've After Like Twice Talk That Talk Crush Featuring J Hope Rush Hour Lucera From Anti Fragile And Now Acid Angel From Asia Generation Boom. Boy, Ooh. that's a that's lot of good too songs. Long. Too Very long. long. <laughs> All right. Show winners, Anita, hit us with them. Yeah, a couple here. First off, G Idol with Nude. They won a Show Champions, Show Music Core, and Inkigayo with a total of nine wins so far. Congrats to them. Congrats, congrats. Then we have La Seraphim with Anti Fragile. They won a Music Bang, so they have a total of two wins. And then we have Jin with The Astronaut, one on M Countdown. One win for him. Nice. Yes. Congrats, congrats to everybody. Yeah, nude, nude is popping off. That, that song's doing extremely well. Um, of course. Dude. Luxury, dude. Um, all right. That ends part one. <laughs> so just talking episode 211. We'll be back after a short break. There is a ton of news, so stay tuned, everyone. Three, two, oh, one. <laughs> Hello, Soldier Talk Nation. This is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soldier Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash soldiertalk or donating to us at paypal.me slash soldiertalk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. Alright, we're back at it with part two of Soju Talk episode 211. Let's talk about some news and events from last week. The first one's multi-layered. So Hive released their Hive company briefing with the 2022 community on YouTube on the 10th and revealed their plans for the upcoming year for all of their artists. So this is something Hive does on the regular where they pretty much give you like a, this is what all of our artists are going to do in the upcoming month slash year, right? Ooh. So mm-hmm. the first one, review. and team. So it's an and sign and the word team smushed together. They're going to have their debut on December 7th. So that's coming up soon. That is Hive Label Japan's first rookie boy group. That consists of some of the guys from Island. You remember Taki and the K, K, yeah, those type of dudes. They're going to debut really soon on December 7th. So that's going to happen in like three, four weeks. So that's pretty cool. Second, TXT January 5th mini album comeback. So they're going to hit the new year pretty hard. Next one. There's going to be solo releases from J-Hope, Jin, and RM. So that's on the horizon. Um, following, J- following JR, Minhyun's going to have a solo album. So that should be kind of cool. Okay. Um, next, from Miss 917 and Hype and New Jeans are all getting comebacks. That's kind of relative. So they're probably going to come <laughs> probably the first half of next year. Uh, B-Lift Lab is going to have a new debut. 
we don't know if that means we're going to have the female version of Island or something, but B-Lift is going to do something and have a debut. Ooh. Hmm. And then finally, La Seraphim having an overseas tour after two songs. Oh. Okay. Already, wow. I know they've been pushing some of the B-sides, but still, that seems kind of <laughs> early. Not going to lie. Um, hey, I'm sure people would still be excited for that, right? I think so. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. Given like a lot of their songs are bangers, like their B-sides are really good too. So like, they have a show. That being said, they don't have a lot of songs in their discography yet. So yeah. maybe second half of next year might be a good option for these folks. I don't know. Okay. Uh, next, Kara to return to the stage after seven years at the 2022 Mama Awards on November 29th. Kara will also mm-hmm. be releasing their 15th anniversary Move Again. Oh, 15th anniversary album Move Again on the same date. So they're doing the smart thing. At like, Everyone watches Mama. They're going to do their reunion thing, right? They're going to probably sing some of the old songs. Then they're going to debut the new song on the same exact date. Ooh. I think that makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Okay. So 2022 Mama will be held on November 29th and the 30th at the Kosera Dome in Osaka, Japan. So, hey, mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited, excited. for that. Um, they're back. Next one, Jungkook from BTS is part of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 soundtrack and will perform at the World Cup opening ceremony. Ooh. That's Ooh. so They probably paid him so much money, right? <laughs> oh, assume. yeah. I'm so curious. That's so exciting. Oh, my God. Super who exciting. Else? I'm wondering who else is going to be there. But Oh, uh, I have no clue. I remember, like, Kanan waving the flag for, like, 2014 World Cup or something. Well, but... World Cup fans were guessing that it'll be one person per continent, maybe. Uh, okay. That's what it seems like, okay. right? Mm. Which, I mean, if you think about that, it's Jungkook representing all of Asia. That's wild. Good lord. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> You're representing a lot of people, given China and India is a big country with a lot of people. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, uh, it's it's wild. It's wild. Um, Yeah. I'm excited for the World Cup. I'm very excited That's for this insane. one. It's coming up. I'm predicting Messi's gonna win it all, and then he's gonna retire really? from international soccer, yeah, or football, yeah. We'll see. He's at a good age. Uh, I'm predicting a Argentina Brazil semifinal again, and, and they're gonna face France in the final, and then Argentina's gonna take it, and Messi's gonna score a hat trick in the final. Ooh, Boom. that's a very <laughs> wow. And then right take. after the World Cup, he's gonna announce that he's retiring from international soccer or football. Um, Dang. I hope we. I hope Korea wins at least one match. Korea oh, yeah. has a successful World Cup if they, number one, either make it out of the group, which is a long shot, or they upset someone. You know, I want them to upset either Uruguay or Portugal for making it out of the group. If in that case, typically what happens with the Korean World Cup is they do bad with the first two matches. It's a basically we we're done though kind of situation scenario. And then somehow in the last match of the group rounds, they beat the hardest team to beat. That's what happened last time around when we beat Germany. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that logic, it means we would lose to Uruguay and Ghana, but beat Portugal. Portugal. Which, honestly, given how much Korean people are angry at Ronaldo, that might be kind of exciting. Not gonna lie. Yeah, so <laughs> to sum up why they're angry, there was like an event in Korea, which uh, Juventus was playing in, which was Ronaldo's club at the time. And obviously the Korean people are like, oh my god, we're going to get to see Ronaldo play in person. He just sat on the bench for the entire 90 minutes and people were very pissed. You know? He also said he was going to play and he was happy to see the fans, and, but he didn't do anything. So it's a long story there. But um, the long part of it is that there's a lot of drama in Group H. Our Korea's, the Korean team's manager was the Portuguese team's manager previously. Ooh. Paulo Bento. Um, Ghana and Uruguay have a lot of beef. Uruguay doesn't like Korea because we almost be- beat them, I think, in, in the 16th. I, okay, I'm Round excited to see Uruguay, though, because they have um, one of my favorite players in the world at the moment, Fede Valverde, Ooh. playing for Real Madrid. Great, that man yeah. is a menace mm-hmm. at the moment. He's well, probably a top five midfielder in the world at the moment, so mm-hmm. I'm very excited to watch him play. Well, Uruguay itself is kind of stacked, right? That they're, are... they're, they have a lot of good players. Like They have Cavani, they have Suarez. Albeit, they're a little old, but... 
Nunez, yeah. right? yeah. Araujo. Um, See, that's players. the part that beats me. I thought he was supposed to be injured and sitting out of the World Cups. Apparently Ooh, not. Uh, Araujo? Yeah. I know, but if he plays, he's like amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I... My guess is he's not going to play in the Korean round so he can play for the Portuguese round because he's still recovering. The, the Portugal team is low-key scary. Like, Benton Core for Tottenham has been playing extremely well over the past couple weeks. He's on form. Valverde's been on fire this entire season. Yeah. And you have if you have Suarez, Cavani, and Nunez up front, they're going to get goals somehow between those three guys. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Because I believe the statistic is Nunez shoots more than anyone in the world at the moment. When he hits the ball, so <laughs> something's wow. got to go in at some point. Okay, okay, you, you realize that's not a compliment. Sometimes, <laughs> hey, whatever. He's just shooting. He's, he's, he's looking at to, Liverpool over in. here. But um, yeah. hey, but it's, that should be a fun game. It's okay. The Korean soccer team. This is the best we've been prepared since I want to say 2010. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, that. maybe we don't have star players except Son and Kim Min Jae. Kim Min Jae. Yeah, just... Minjai Kim. Um, <laughs> but the other folks are really good too. I I want to stay optimistic. Yeah, anything can happen. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> going back to K pop, uh, this was a big one. Bang Yedam and Mashiro officially leave Treasure and YG Entertainment. So on November 8th, YG Entertainment released a statement confirming that they had reached a mutual agreement with the two to conclude their contract. Mashiro will be focusing on recovering his health. He's been having health issues. While Bang Yedam will be uh will work to pursue his career as a producer, Treasure will promote as a ten member group going forward. Okay. Dang. Just for context, a couple weeks ago we covered Bang Yedam saying that he wants to be a producer for Treasure. Mm-hmm. But now he wants to be not a part of Treasure at all. Did I understand that correctly? I don't know, to be honest, but I guess He'd rather be a producer. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's very. Yeah, I I guess I'm still. I still don't quite understand how that agreement came about, but I guess we'll never know. Did, did you it's see? It's a shame, though. Yeah, I mean, ha having been the fir the person that covers treasure the most, Anita, did was this foreseen mm -hmm. to any degree? I feel like it was already known that he had been producing for the group. Uh, like four comebacks previous albums right so right. like um i think one of the songs that he produced off of the not the latest comeback but the comeback before this year tarari he produced it bang it up right and it was really really popular that was a hit um it did really good yeah and i feel like it felt like okay yeah i guess he can do this for the group like he can still be a part of the group and and do this but then after that happened it was like he was gone like he wasn't doing a lot of the activities i guess and then the comeback was done without him and then officially now it's like not a part w was that the, the similar situation with mashio as well no i i didn't know about that at all okay um but i don't know okay uh, okay i'm lo i'm looking at the press release apparently mashio is pausing for health reasons Okay, mm -hmm. that's much more understandable as well. Mm -hmm. um, All right, uh, right. Next one, there is a rumor. This is unconfirmed, right? It has been popping up a couple times on the internet while we were recording this. There's reports that Bobby might be leaving YG Entertainment. Now, just take this with a grain of salt because we saw it on like one or two places on the internet at the moment. So I cannot confirm or deny if this is happening. But by the time you listen to this, it might be known everywhere, right? Um We'll have to see mm. there. Okay, uh, next one. A bunch of, like, not great news to report. First one, MNH, uh, which is home to Chonga, shares that Bandit has disbanded and the members' contracts uh, have been terminated since the end of October. So they debuted 2019. So they gave them, like, three years. Mm. That's it. Uh, another one, All S Company, announced that boy group D Crunch would be disbanding. They debuted in 2018. Uh. A Man. bit of a new fear. Um, it's a not not great. Bit of an awkward timing because we were doing the girl group tier list and we asked you guys to submit a tier list for <laughs> all the girl groups. Oh. Bandit was on the list. <laughs> um, to be quite frank, well, they were not doing well on the on the tier list. But um, well, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
It is uh, what it is. Next one. All right, let's go over what has happened with the Omega X stuff as of late, right? Mm. Oh, the first geez. thing happened, Spire Entertainment apologized to them, right? To the members, right? Okay. So that, that sounds like a, you know, that's, a, that's in the, the right minimum. direction. So this was mm-hmm. back on, like, minimum. let me find the date. Like... 24th? The 20, 24th or something, right? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Mm. So they apologized to the parents, uh, the members, their fans for the recent incidents. They added that they're fully responsible for it. And they shared that the CEO who caused the incident has voluntarily resigned. So that happened. Everyone was like, yeah, fair, mm. right? But okay. SBS, who has been really proactive on this, right? They shared more developments regarding the situation between the Omega X members and Spire Entertainment. A member shared that CEO Kang, who was the lady who was yelling in the video, uh, her power trip existed long before their overseas tour. <laughs> and while on tour, four oh, members no. had high fevers and tested positive for COVID through self-testing <gasps> kits on the September 28th. But Omega X oh, was forced what? to perform the next day and hide their COVID-19 status while on tour. Two members who what had COVID the and they had it pretty badly uh, didn't perform, but they did rehearse prior. So it seems like two dudes, they, they all rehearsed. Two dudes dropped out because they were too sick and two dudes did perform with them. That's... What? That's kind of awful. That's, That's awful. Terrible. Um, next. Four members of the group are currently receiving treatment for panic disorder, anxiety, and insomnia. So their oh, mental health Jesus game is there at the moment. And as of November 10th, uh, Spire has forced the members to pay 300 to 400 million one per member as a quote-unquote settlement fee, which is about 225000 to 300000 USD, the amount it would cost for each member to break their contract with the company. What? Okay. Um. So their contracts are broken now? No. They, they're saying if you want to break it, you're going to have to pay us $250,000. Okay. Yes. So they're saying if you want to break the contract, you need to pay up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean... <laughs> For a second, I thought their contract was already broken and they had to pay that amount already. Um, That's pretty shitty. It's... Oh, everything is it gets an, worse every time. Shitty is an understatement, Douglas. I there so, are descriptors I cannot use on the podcast at the moment. For the Omega for the Omega X sign, so they've hired lawyers, right? Good. They made their own um mm-hmm. Instagram so they're distancing themselves. They will have a press conference on November sixteenth about the situation okay. and what they're going to do. And it's being held at the Soul Bar Association. So they're going full legal action on this on spire entertainment good man good i mean imagine i don't have any kids so i can't really quite say but imagine i was married and i had a kid <laughs> um and i i sent mm-hmm. the kid off the kid growing up he's like i want to be a k-pop star i'm like okay bet send them to a company that seems all right and months later i'm hearing they're going through all this imagine you're at home and your kid's in America doing your tour, and you're so happy because your kid used to go on tour, and then you see a video of the CEO yelling at your kid and, like, throwing that's him on the ground. That's heartbreaking. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. That's... Um, so, all that apology, apparently all BS. Um, yeah, all BS. Uh, yeah. It also looks like Omega X, well, Spire Entertainment put in a... <sighs> they applied for copyright to the rights of Omega X and 4X as well, apparently, um, so that they can't use the team name going forward. Crazy. So, oh. <laughs> um, it's not a good look with these folks. Uh, not at all. No. Um. Oh, can, can I drop man. some more happy news, imagine. though, before I get to the last thing? Yeah, yes, um, please. Okay, happy okay. stuff. This please. also just broke Red Velvet's upcoming title track, Birthday, right? Yeah. Is described mm-hmm. as a trap rhythm pop dance track, which will sample Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> What's with all the samples? <laughs> what is going Gershwin's on? Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. In a trap things. rhythm pop dance track, sir. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Okay. How do you feel about that, Warren? I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I for my, for all per- intents and purposes, feel my rhythm worked for me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I'm willing to say, okay, let's give it a second shot. Um, Blackpink's 
attempt to sample Paganini didn't work for me, so please don't do something like that, I hope. Um, I mean... We'll see what happens. <laughs> Gershwin's Rhapsody of... <laughs> okay. Fin finally, though, a... Kang Daniel and CIX have announced World Tours. So if you are a fan of either of them, probably should get a little bit excited. Mm. So I'm looking at the CIX tour, Seoul, Warsaw, Tilburg, London, Paris, Cologne, Berlin, and then a bunch of things in New uh, in America, including New York, Reading. Everyone's going to Reading, Pennsylvania all of a sudden. <laughs> Washington, Chicago, Houston, Fort Worth, Tempe, Arizona. Yo, Arizona fans, what's up? LA and wow. Oakland and more, they're saying. Kang Daniel's doing uh, UK and Europe, Manchester, London, Paris, Madrid, Utrecht, Cologne, and Berlin. And then in North America, Atlanta, New York, Boston, Toronto, Chicago, Houston, Dallas, Vancouver, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Ooh, that's a that's Pretty quite good. a lineup. Yeah. Although, now I'm concerned for all of these go groups going on tour. Right? Well, Kang oh. Daniel's the CEO of his own company, so he's chilling. Okay, fair. Uh, yeah, that's good should point. be okay. C9 Entertainment typically has a good track record, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard Please! Like this. Okay, no, no, no. C9, C9 actually is the previous company where Yuna was at. She's still there. Yuna's still there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yuna okay. is doing fine, so I, I hope. I hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I hope. That's the best uh, I can say. Now I'm Next concerned. week, though, in terms of music, Tuesday, Drippin, Im Yong-un. And Victan Wednesday, just be secret number and Wua, and then Friday, bi. And that's pretty much it. We're in like the end of the year, they're scraping the bow of the barrel at times. It's kind of fun though. Yeah, I was, I'm assuming we're covering Wua because people like them, right? Yeah, mm, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I mean, um, I, I know that the week after this, we're getting like and mix and red velvet and all those yep. big name groups again. So, we'll, 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 we'll take the pause when you can, you know. Okay. So this is going to end the regular pod. We're going to... You know how Warren's been talking about the Grow Group tier list and he's been making people fill out the surveys? We're going to go over the results in oh, the after show. Gonna see it. State of the Nation. So you definitely want to stick around. We'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. Special shout-outs to our Fiesta patrons. Bagel. Faced Mina. Brian. Chero, Cotton Ball, Delmonic, Ellie, Genki Boy, Goku Mama, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniels, NJ Parks, Tear. Thank you for joining Social Talk. Special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Max, No Bias Nuna, Tuggles, and Wolf297. We are now at After Hours State of the Nation. We're going to talk about the Soju Talk Nation 2022 Girl Group tier list. Okay, Warren. Let say me, some words. Let me take it away. I will say some words. Um, <laughs> what is that transition? Um, we have been asked to do this for a while. We wanted to do it ourselves for a while. We were kind mm -hmm. of scared of the comments. Um, but it's okay. We have returned with strong hearts. Uh, <laughs> and, and we'll figure it out. We're doing... Here's what we're doing today. We are talking about the results of the Soju Talk Nation 2022 Girl Group tier list. This is the third Girl Group tier list we are doing as we do this podcast. Um, first one, I think we did wow. back in like, what, 2019 or something? And that one we oh, did, I believe. Ago. We did us. by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that happened. Mistake. Mistake. <laughs> in 2020 in 2020 what we had to what we did was we started making it communal right we got and people yeah we asked the nation to basically make the tier list right they ranked a bunch of go group yada 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 and we got even mm -hmm. more hate for that one so <laughs> <laughs> even though it wasn't even our tier list we were just reacting to what they picked yeah hey, but that's basically what we did again this year um we asked 
you guys for a whole week um, in the Discord to submit a Google form basically ranking all the girl groups from anywhere between S, A, B, C, or F. Um, I got rid of D and E because I wanted to keep it simple. Same reason I got rid of S+. Plus. We had S+, plus at some point. I think that's stupid. Just, let's just keep it as you know, simple as possible, right? Um, mm-hmm. And basically, the question was, rank them as you see their success in 2022. Def- rank them depending on how you define success in the K-pop industry in 2022. I know that's a little mm-hmm. vague, but everyone defines success in different ways. Right, because if we're only doing it by I don't know album sales, that's what's the whole point? There's no point. Success is kind of subjective for a lot of these folks. So we got people to submit. I think a little over a hundred folks submitted their things okay. over the past of a week. Um, okay. Nice. If you didn't get the chance to, that's on you because you weren't a part of the Discord. <laughs> that's yeah. I don't know what to tell that's you. It. <laughs> we'll do this later next at some time. point. Next yeah. time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> But before we begin, we have a small disclaimer, right? Anita, do you want to read the quick disclaimer? Me? Yes. Okay. So once again, this is just for fun. We are reacting to the votes of our community, and it is not from just the three of us. Feel free to banter in the comments, but please... Hmm. <laughs> please don't be a what, Anita? I, I don't want to say that. Please, please don't be don't, a bad don't be person. Me. Don't be me. Don't be an asshole in the comments, you asshole. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, or Warren will come and remove your comments, basically. Yes. Same for Discord. Yes. So, even though this is just for fun, and even though it's just a, uh, an average of what the community picks, in the past, people have just been very angry at us for this, for some reason. And we're just here to have fun. Yeah. We're just here to discuss this. Don't take it too seriously. If you do, maybe you should look in the mirror and reflect on what's <laughs> going on with yourself. I uh, just want to say that. But if you're here to just have a good conversation about it, Fair really opinions. Welcome to do that. yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's the difference. Let's say Kara Kara's not a part of the t- t- of today's tier list, but let's say Kara was on it. If Kara got A tier and you're surprised, you can be like, "Oh my god, wow, that's crazy! I can't believe you guys are you guys are wild." You can't say stuff like, "I do not trust the intelligence of you people." You guys have. This stupid, some some stupid like that. Don't don't say stuff like that, please. Um, or I will come remove our comments. Um, and I don't want I don't like doing that. Mm. So, mm-hmm. here we go. We're gonna start from the very bottom. Here you see, if you're following on screen, you see a big tier list. Um, let's let's start from the bottom, right? Let's start from the bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We're gonna start with F tier. F tier, surprisingly, only has two groups. In order of popularity, or sorry, in order of scores, uh, Bandit is on top of eight F tier, followed by Maka Maka. Oof. Um, and this is probably where we should probably know. I because I wanted to keep the list a little short. I didn't include a lot of the groups that might belong in F tier. Um, Tribe was mentioned a whole bunch of the potential C tier F tier uh, group. I didn't include them because I forgot. I'll be honest. I'm sorry. Um, that's fair. It's fair, but hey, you know what? It feels bad looking at a big list of F tiers. We only have two. That feels a little more nice, right? <laughs> um. All right. Yeah, I don't know. You guys got any comments about Bandit and Makamaka and F tier? I can I thought Makamaka would be higher by the the popularity on the Discord. No, the nah. I think we're regressing I, to the truth. It was to be, not. To be fair. It was not reflective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you're following on screen, you'll see the scores they got on the left side of the thing I'm doing. Um, okay, Bandit got... Okay. Bandit was close. 1.49, which was the cutoff for F tier. Um, mm. Maka Maka is also one of those groups that don't have enough album sales for it to actually be measured. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Dang. that's probably the dictionary definition of a definition of a Nugu group. So, there you go. Um... Unless you guys have any co- more further comments. I can- want to see C before I comment on F. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Let okay. Let's with C. Fair. We need, yeah, we need a relative. We need context. We need All some right. more context. Doug, because you're so eager to speak, please read yeah. the C-tier groups on the okay, screen. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from, um, what do you want me to go from? The highest to the lowest? Let's do highest the- to lowest to keep it simple. So the yeah. highest to lowest in C-tier. It's Weekly, Purple Kiss, Rocket Punch. 
Wakey Makey, Pixie, Wua, Momoland, Classy, Cherry Bullet, Lightsum, Gongwon Sonyo, Signature, Lapilis. Wow. What are your initial what are your initial thoughts, guys? I think weekly would be in B if they had had a better last two to three releases. Yeah. I mean, mm. I don't know what happened. The Venpara Ak was a bit rough. Let's be straight up here, right? Um, yeah, it was not it. No, it was not it at all. Momoland has regressed this far as well. That's another thing I wanted to, that, that stands out to me. Gongon Sonyo is only down here because of lack of tracks. Makes sense to me. Lapilis is new. That's fine. Lightsome's having a bit of a struggle, in my opinion. Cherry Bullet's low, I think. I think Cherry Bullet's better than some of these other groups. Oh, not better. I think they're performing better than some of these other groups. Um, Would you still put them in the, in the C category, though, or just higher? I feel like they should... I think that Cherry Bullet should be about where Weekly is. Between okay, beats. I agree with that. That's how I feel about it. I wonder how you feel about this. The thing I is... Oh yeah, keep going, Anita. Mm. No, no, I was, I was agreeing. I feel like I pictured Cherry Bullet a little bit higher in this C stack. I don't know. I feel like they had. I, I can't remember like they them having pretty memorable comebacks, but it didn't. I always, I'm always comparing it to their debut because I thought their debut was really good. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um. Come on. Sorry, I'm I'm so sorry. Which group were you just talking about earlier? My editing software got messed Cherry up. Cherry Bullet. Cherry Bullet. Cherry Bullet actually does not have that many albums sales. Mm. Um, if I remember correctly, their last album sold, I think, like what, eighteen thousand, twenty two thousand, nineteen thousand, something along the upper ten thousand range. Um, which does put them in the same tier level as Classy, Rocket Punch. Um, these groups. Um, so I think that part to me honestly isn't too surprising. Not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or oh, there we go. That finally worked. Sorry, my graphic design software was bugging out for a second. Um, what does surprise me is some of these groups making it into C tier, which honestly is a little higher than I thought. Um, okay, Lapilis should be down still, right? Right. I, I understand the I, popularity I behind Lapilis. Um. Uh -huh. But, I mean, my hip is not like a wagon, nah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> if I think about their musical output and the the sales they've been getting, I don't know. I, I feel like C-tier is a little bit higher than where I would have rated them. Mm. I know that when I submitted mine, I put them in F-tier. I'm not going to lie. Um, But that also I, means that they have room to grow, right? So I need to personally mm -hmm. pay more attention to Classy and Pixie because I, I couldn't name one of their Same. songs off the top of my head. Like I'm sure I could hear it and realize what it was. But like right off the top of my head, I don't think I can um just like straight up name mm -hmm. one. Mm. Additionally, this is a uh, this is an aside. Wari, we're having a, a draft on the the Discord right now where we're drafting K-pop idols to make groups. Warren, your turn is up at the moment. Is it my that's turn? To tell you. It's your turn right is now. Is it my turn? Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, okay. so you got to pick someone. Um, okay. That's okay. That's okay. Let's, make, let's make an aside here. So basically, <laughs> Yokeb our mod he did this on a different Discord where. It's like an NFL draft where you're picking kids to make an idol group for yourself. So 30 mm -hmm. people have signed up, and we're go or 25 people have signed up. We're going back and forth, and we're going to pick idols to be in our group. My first selection was um, Taeyeon from Girls' Generation, the soloist. Other people mm -hmm. have selected Kazaha, Solar, Karina, Ayu, Sugi. These are all the first-round picks, so these are the priority people. Warren has just selected Chunga. Amazing pick. I Let's like go. the value there. Good analysis. <laughs> Everyone is so pissed. Everyone has said F you Warren. Three people have said it so far because they wanted to get the, the big chungus. Dude, I was um, so worried. You have no idea. So Warren has got a chunga. Fantastic pick by him. Y'all have people, taken people... all of my first pick. This is not my fault. <laughs> so that's happening. Uh, let's get back to the tier list. Yes. Okay. Are we going to get this in the show? I don't know. Um. All right. C tier. Um. Do we have any more further comments about C tier? Um, I think I need to I see mean, the full I, picture. Hit us with the B tier. You want to see the B tier? B -tier. Okay, yeah, let's yeah, move on to, to B tier. Let's move on to B tier. Um, 
Whose turn is it? Anita. Can you do me a favor? Sure. And read B tier. Here, if I can make it big. <laughs> there we go. B tier. Please read B tier. Okay. Yeah. Top to bottom? Top to bottom, yes. please. In order of okay. winningness. So in order, we have at the top Dreamcatcher, Kepler, Ooh. Luna, Ooh. Cosmic Girls. What? Sorry. <laughs> and Mix. <laughs> oh my girl. Oh my god. What? A, A Pink. Okay. VVZ. Okay. Brave Girls, Everglow, Billy, and Exid. Uh, EXID. I'm, I'm offended. Uh, I am, e EXID, I am, yes. I am personally offended. Why? Why are you personally offended? How can you guys underrate? Uju Sonyo and Oh My Girl to this extent, y'all. I would, I'm more surprised by Oh My Girl, low key. Okay, I mean, I think Uju, B tier is kind of fair, I'm not gonna lie. Really? I, Uju Sonyo literally won Queen them too. Yes, but how much has that helped them in their success so far? Touche! You're not supposed to be that quick. Oh My Girl should be. And, like at the level of Dreamcatcher, like it, they, 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 if not higher, I thought like low A, right? That's what I thought. But I thought as well. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. Hey Warren, on our draft, someone just took Jackie Y. Just wanted to let you know. Wait, who took Jackie Y? <laughs> Irvtron. Just, just say that. All right, um, I wasn't <laughs> trying to take Jackie Y's. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Um. I mean, here's the thing. I think maybe besides those two, I think a lot of the other ones are kind of, they kind of make sense, right? I think some of them yeah, make, sense. Really make sense. I've yeah. always said that Dreamcatcher's the gatekeeper. They're the gatekeeper to A now, right? Yeah. At some point, they were the gatekeepers of C tier. Now it's B tier, you know? Yeah, so they, I think they're moving yeah, up. It's gone up. Kepler, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the music, but I understand they're popular. Luna, mm -hmm. they're popular. Uh, regardless of what I think of the music lately, I think Uju Sonyo is a little low. I think Nmix, uh, they need they need more songs that are more traditional <laughs> K-pop sounding songs, <laughs> not just big wave Piajima, right? Big like, wave. um, I think it's t like I think Oh My Girl should be higher. A Pink, it is what it is. They're they're this far into their career. BBZ, it it had a good start. I don't know how strong the the, the momentum is. Brave Girls, I I don't know if you hit too much after Roland. Chima Bottom was I though, um. Everglow is probably a little low, but that's because they haven't had a song in forever. Let's talk really? about Everglow real quick. Okay. When are they coming back? Why are they, they not are, coming back? Okay. Don't Yenin know. was seen in Korea for the first time in like nine months this week. Okay. So she okay. is in Korea now. She's back in Korea. Okay. okay. So it's happening. Right. It's happening. Here's the thing. I don't remember any Everglow songs other than Bumble Shot Claw and Pirate. And, my own, and the reason I remember Pirate is not good. You know, it's not for good reasons <laughs> I remember Pirate. I'm not going to lie. Um, for the amount of hype that they were writing on, I think Beecher is kind of fair, if not kind of high. I'll bet they're in the it's, lower levels of Beecher. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's honestly a really big part of it. Luna, I wanted to touch upon real quickly because Luna's actually not selling as much as you would typically expect. I'm not going to lie. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Here, here's what some numbers. Luna, with their recent album, sold 11,000, 117,000, right? 117,300, which on paper mm -hmm. sounds like a lot. Um, Compare this. Kepler's last album sold 252,000. Ooh, okay. Itzy, which I don't think we've covered yet. Itzy is on the 400,000 level. Um, And I okay. used to think Itzy and Luna was on a similar realm of popularity and that and even then i thought they were going through some similar issues as of late some of the hits recently not hitting as well as people had hoped um so mm. i don't know um not again blockberry creatives financial issues is something i'm concerned about all the time and that's always continues. a concern yeah yeah um i just feel like oh my girl needs to be higher than some of these groups right and yeah i would agree why is that? I don't know about the numbers or anything, but just like, I feel like, oh, well, my girl's popular. Whenever they did the dolphin thing, it was humongous. Mm. Mimi is a top yeah. five brand reputation person in K-pop at the moment for females. That's true. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think maybe that's a part reason because Oh My Girl is, for for the most part, a lot more general public friendly than we realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our, are, yeah. Yeah, our fan, and our listener base is definitely not uh, in that aspect. So maybe that's where that came from. Um. I do think after Dolphin, their songs haven't been sticking as well. Um, their last title track was it was all right, but it's not something I would have used as a title track per se. Um, other than that, VVZ is a little lower than I expected. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Cause you would explain. place explain. them higher? No, I, I actually, actually, yeah, I would probably place them higher. Um, given that they're still riding off of the G-Friend hype a little bit and their fandom is strong there. I say that. I just looked up their sale numbers. It's not that high. 78,000 for Summer Vibe. Okay. Never mind. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's B tier. Anything else you want to cover for B tier? No. Nah, hit us with the A. Okay. No, we have I'm A tier. i this now. Whose turn is it to read? Me. Yours. Or Go uh, read, me. Douglas. Oh my god. From gosh. the top, the most popular huh? to least wait, popular, wait, we have a what? bit of a twist. A, wait, a wait, what's tier an S then? Top the y'all put Blackpink first, Red Velvet second, then Girls Generation, La Seraphim, Espa, New Jeans, Stacy, Itsy, Mama Moo, From Us Nine. In that order. Um Oh my god. Should he go straight to S tier? Because that's we're looking at the last remaining groups and I think it's pretty obvious what we're yeah. it's gonna be yeah, dealing yeah, with. Yeah. It's twice, right? Um well I don't know. I don't see twice on the chart yet, so for S tier, it's twice yeah. and is that it? No, there are more groups. Anita, hit us with the three groups in S tier. Okay, okay. S tier, we got twice in first. Ive in second and G Idol in third. Oh my okay. god, y'all. Oh my god. Okay. What am I seeing? <laughs> so, um, when I submitted my tier list, I put Blackpink in S tier. That was the only group I put in S tier. Same. I think I put three groups in S tier. Yeah? I put more than I put three. Blackpink, Ive, and G Idol, I believe. I could agree with that. Not gonna lie, I could agree with that. Yeah. Wow. Here, let me just. Some things that stand out to me not that's not just Blackpink not getting S, right? Yeah. Um, mm hmm. La Seraphim is ranked higher than Espa. Interesting. Um, yeah. New Jeans being this high off of the first batch of releases, I guess it kind of makes sense. It was super hyped this year, I right? I think it makes sense. Yeah. I think it's a good good level to them. Itzy has fallen off relative to their peers, it seems, uh, based on these numbers. Mm -hmm. Mama Moo's, you know, they're, they're in that weird period right now. Where they come back once in a while, their solo stuff. I, I could see that. Promise 9 has come up in the world. That's fantastic for them. Um, Black, I think Red Velvet, I, I could see the argument to put them high A. Maybe not the biggest S tier anymore. They did take the humongous hiatus. Um, man, but twice top. Blackpink not even in S. That's surprising. Yeah. I'm the, shocked. Those two would be the ones I swap with each other, my personally. Um mm. here's the thing. I was I didn't like any of the Blackpink releases as of late. Um I, I wasn't a fan of their album. Um I think musically speaking, I I think they have a lot more to offer that is not being offered at the moment. Um mm -hmm. their popularity is something else though. It, it yes. really yeah. is. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> they're they're the group I would after BTS who would I pick I would probably say Blackpink regardless of whichever kind of group you're talking about in K-pop um, mm -hmm. yes for sure yeah I, I think that's the kind of shocker there Twice look I love me some Twice they're what brought me back to K-pop um, mm -hmm. and, and they mm -hmm. will forever always hold a very special moment placed in my heart um, S tier is not it's a little high for if, if I have if I have Twice in S tier it's probably the fourth group of S tier. Same, same, same. Based on recency mm -hmm. bias alone. I know? mean, the, th the thing is, I've liked all their recent music. 
um, like talk that talk scientist. But none of that was like incredibly successful. Let's be honest here, right? Um, they've been making solid waves in the West, but compared to where I hoped they would be, compared to what I was hoping for at the end of last year, because if you go back to the end of last year's video where we did predictions for 2022, um, I said Twice is going to pop off real big on the West. And they did, mm -hmm. but not as much as I had hoped not for. Not quite. Right, right. Um, and I, I was hoping for that. I was hoping that would be the thing that keeps them in S tier, but that's you know, um, not something I think has happened really. Um, which is where, you know, I, I, I might disagree with that tier list a little bit, um, and swap them out with Blackpink, um. Red Velvet is also kind of higher than I thought. Not gonna lie. Okay, explain. Um, feel this rhythm, great song, but I don't think they have the same amount of hype behind the group anymore. Um, mm -hmm. which is understandable, right? Because they've been around for a while. It's a nat it's a natural progression to come down, come down that much. Um, not saying it's a lot; it's just a little bit. Um, but given. Psycho, for instance, was one of the most popular songs in the K-pop sphere and the general public sphere a couple years ago. Um, Three years ago. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. This is, it feels like a little high, but I guess we're not ignoring legacy uh, here, really. Um, that's. I feel like that's the thing. I feel like I wonder if a lot of the voting or like the ranking took into account overall, mm -hmm. right? Positioning is instead of like recently like how prevalent how much popularity they had in the recent years right um which it's still a little surprising because i guess wow i didn't realize how popular or relevant twice was still with a lot of the i guess current um listeners i guess right. that see that's that's what i'm that's what i'm curious about because if if you're starting to listen to k-pop in 2021 or 2022 how much do you care about Twice and Red Velvet, right? Because if you think about K-pop... Like within the last four years, maybe. Right. Like, Because if you think about K-pop mm -hmm. in 2016, that was the trio, right? Twice, Red Velvet, and Blackpink. Oh, yeah. Right? Blackpink mm -hmm. has gone the other way, while Twice and Red Velvet have gone that other way um, in terms of, you know, sales and whatnot. So I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm curious about. Like, if you're... Just now listening to K-pop, where is Twice in your head? Where is Red Velvet in your head, right? Like that's what I'm curious about. Mm. Um, other things to note, I think Idol and I've and S tier perfectly makes sense. In based on 2022 performance alone, 100% yep. agree. Yeah, based on the they, current industry, yeah. They've had both had double smashes. In oh 2022. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I do think it's kind of funny how both of those double smashes the second one is a little less popular than the first one mm -hmm. um but they're all by no means are they a one-hit wonder you know what i mean like they've been able oh, to no. yeah no not at all i feel like if la seraphim if we want a month in the future after the song has settled i think new jeans should be above them mm. okay or the, I mean, they're close anyway, right? Yeah, I think I think it's a I think Espa hasn't had the best 2022, but their 2021 was fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it's what tough, beats them here. It's a tough sell to me that if I wanted to like, I would I would put La Seraphim I, I, below like a Espa and New Jeans if we give more time, you know. I just feel like I don't know. I just feel like that. Like, Espa I mean right now. Espa, mm. one thing I've realized about Espa is that their releases are a lot more divisive in the K-pop sphere um, than mm. you would you would, you would normally expect. And I think you would normally expect it to be pretty divisive. Um, Man, Itzy, though, I know people have not been a fan of the last the songs of the last, like, 18 months, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're a bigger group than Stacey, right? I feel like it what do the album sales tell me, Warren? Let me look it up real quick. I have it pulled up here. First, first week. These are, by the way, these are all first week sales. Um, so if you look at total sales, they'll they'll be different. Um, give me one moment while I find this. Itzy with their last EP that had sneakers on it had four hundred seventy-two thousand on it. Okay, 
big number. Mm-hmm. What else did you want to compare this to? Um, Stacy. 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 Stacy is at two hundred thousand. Two hundred one thousand. It's like double. Roughly double. Yes. But they're ranked above them. I think a part of it is that it's easy. Hey, Warren, you're picking again for the draft. Already? Yeah. You're going fast. Guys. I just wanted to tell you that. Guys, I'm you recording. Good? Um, Doug, <laughs> keep saying something. Um, okay. So, twice number one is surprising. I know that twice is still a top tier girl group. It's just hard to put them number one for me. I think Blackpink should be an S tier. Even if you don't like the music, just the popularity and what they've been doing in K-pop lately. You gotta put them number one. Um, I think Red Velvet, I could see that based on uh, lineage and what they've done in the past for sure. I think with Seraphim's high. Espa, I think it's unfortunate, but it's probably around where they should be. New Jeans, I think we need one more release to really pick where they should go. Stacy over Itzy, I don't think makes sense. Mamamoo, I don't know where you place them. And From Us 9, I'm just happy that they're there. Right, mm. Anita? Yeah, no, I feel like that makes sense. Now, based on this I entire think... thing, mm-hmm. uh, the gatekeepers are weekly. Dreamcatcher, I think that makes sense. I think SNA, you kind of just put up as the upper echelon, right? Right. And I think, like, C tier's mm. kind of mid tier, B tier's kind of upper mid tier. I think it's, I think overall, other than the B, other than the black pink, which I think should go to a different category, it, it mm-hmm. sort of makes sense around where they put them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah. I think there could be I think some people might be surprised about From Us 9, right? That's the that's a bit of an odd odd one out in A tier. Um and I wanted to bring that up cuz From Us 9 is one of those groups that are like kind of popular with a very special like a very particular demographic in Korea. Um yes. typically males in their late teens to late 20s kind of situation. Um mm. which young adults. Right, young adult <laughs> males um which if you think about their concepting as approachable, jean wearing, cool girls, kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> they make pop music that's pretty approachable rather than, uh, I don't know, Espa going off to fight a war against a snake, you know, that kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think low key, they're kind of popping off in a yes. similar way Mama Moo is with the other demographic, with the females of the. Um, young adult population um, towards the mm. actually also towards the late millennials if you look at their album sales demographics 30s right right mm. right um, well, From Us 9 what I call it is approachable girl group K-pop that's what From Us 9 is it, approachable right. is up. the main the main word they're doing a lot of what girl groups used to do in the early 2010s for sure yeah, yeah. Mm. like A Pink mm. used to do that Girls Day used to do that um, oh, yeah 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 before they did the whole um female president and that kind of thing um yeah and i think that's really really cool because if you think about the groups that are active right now there's not many groups like that um and to be quite frank i guess new jeans and stacy is kind of in that sphere but then again i don't think most young adult men are very comfortable with being fans of girls that might be too young you know um Mm. that might be a little funky yeah i don't know Okay. What'd you say, Anita? I can't hear you. Oh, no, I was just saying that overall, looking at this whole thing, I think I think it makes sense. A little surprises here and I there. I think we could have been nicer to Dreamcatcher and put them in low A. Just saying. <laughs> you would have? I, I like you Dreamcatcher. Would've? Yeah, I think they're popping off lately. Um, Dreamcatcher has 76,000 sales. Okay, well, whatever. Which is less than weekly, if you think about it. Weekly is sitting at 80,000, so... Hey, I'm biased. Wow. Just saying. But, yeah, I think the biggest, most egregious thing is the placement of Blackpink. I think other than yeah. that, I generally kind of agree. Maybe not the specific orders of the... Yeah. But the groups. area, yeah, I could see the that. The area, the groupings. Yeah. Um. So, let us know what you guys think. Now, remember, this was not our tier list. We just had a discussion about it, as it's not our tier list. Um... Let us know what you would have done differently or what you think the nation should have done differently is the better way for me to put it. Uh, Warren is throwing some statistics on the screen real quick. So that is what it ended up as. He put the the breaks at 1.5, uh, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. Yep. Okay. 
Um, this has been Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. I am Doug, and I'd like to thank Warren and Anita for joining me this week. Uh, thanks for Warren for putting all the effort into the tier list. We'll see you guys next time, everyone. Bye. Bye. If you guys Bye. want to do fun stuff like this, come join the Discord. Yes, for sure.